In this episode, we're going to deal with a very serious subject. Silly putty. There are a lot of different ways that you can mask different schemes, but for curvy and serpentine type schemes, my preference is one of those old childhood standbys, Silly Putty. So we've got a couple of eggs of Silly Putty here. As you can see, the uh, color is not what you'd normally expect because I've actually used this quite a bit. It's one of the charms of Silly Putty is that you can reuse it. It'll pick up the paint as you uh, are painting the model, obviously, but it gets mixed in with the putty and is still usable. So I have this nice 70 second scale bow fighter, a Hasegawa kit that I've been working on. And I'm going to do a disruptive scheme for an RAF night fighter about 1943. I've already got the medium sea gray on. I've got to put the dark green on next. But to mask it off, I'm going to use the silly putty. So you start by pulling off a section of it and uh, kind of massage it until you get a nice flat ribbon that you can then lay across the model. This is the drawing and the instructions for the decal sheet that I'm using to decorate the airplane. You can see the scheme here. So these are the light gray and these are the dark green. So that's the area that I'm masking for. You can shape it on the surface and just drag it into place. It sticks pretty well, but the nice thing is it does not stick hard enough to damage the paint. And I'm just outlining the areas that need to be painted here, not trying to do mask off all the areas. I'm going to use a fairly low pressure while I'm painting so I don't need to worry about uh, too much about overspray. And here's one of the problems you get with working with Silly Putty is that it's stuck to each other and I need to get this piece off of here and it's trying to pull up everything else along with it. So yay, it's like chewing gum. So that's the bow fighter mask. Now it's off to the paint booth. So I've got Vallejo dark green in the airbrush. Now let's get to the painting. Spray up along the edges of it to get that good hard line. Now the eagle-eyed amongst you may notice that there's a piece of putty there that wasn't there a second ago. That's because I realized I'd forgotten something while I was doing the masking. Happens all the time. It's important to keep a watch and double check yourself so you don't run into problems like this after you've started painting. So I've got the bow fighter out of the booth. Let's see what the uh, masks did for us. It's uh, just a matter of gently peeling it up. It comes off the surface very easily. You can already see I'm going to have to do a little touch up on the gray where I had some overspray. And there is one of the problems you can run into where the uh, silly putty shifted during the process and it's uh, gotten partially covered but then uh, didn't get full coverage. But again, easy to touch up with some uh, more gray. So there you have it, the joys of using a child's toy to get realistic camouflage schemes. Try it on your next model. 